but standard deviation is a statistical measure of dispersion that quantifies the variability or spread of a set of data around its mean. It tells us how spread or scattered all the data values are from the mean of the data. But what does this even mean? Let me explain. I will begin with the description of the formula and then solve an example. Let us start with the formula. The standard deviation for ungrouped data of a sample is given by the formula S equals the square root of the summation of all the squared deviations of all values from the sample mean all divided by N minus 1. Here, the Latin letter S represents the standard deviation of the sample. Uppercase sigma from I equals 1 to N is the summation of the values from the first to the last. X subscript I is the value of the index data element in the sample. X bar is the sample mean of the data set. And lowercase n is the number of data elements. Awesome. This is a simple formula. But then there is a problem. What is the difference between this formula and that of a population? If we compare the formula for standard deviation of a population and this formula, we will notice the difference in the denominator. For that of the population, it is capital letter N, which is the population size. While here, the denominator is lowercase n minus 1. Lowercase n here is the sample size. So why are we subtracting 1 from the sample and not the population? Well, this is a form of correction that helps to reduce the bias in the estimation of the standard deviation and variance of a sample when it is compared with the population. This correction here is called the Bessel's correction. If you want to learn more about the Bessel's correction and when to use it, check out this video right here. We now know about the formula for computing the standard deviation for the sample. Therefore, let us use this formula to find the standard deviation of this individual series or ungrouped data set of the number of times a sample of five children visited the computer training center in a community in Samaru Zaria, Nigeria in the last one month. So the first child visited twice, the second child three times, the third child seven times, the fourth child five times, and the last child, since he has a bike, visited eight times. So our data is two, three, seven, five, and eight. But there's a twist. The thing is, how do we know what type of data this is? Is this data individual or grouped data? Well, this data is not grouped because each number in our data here represents data from one child or one individual. So we say it is ungrouped or we call it individual series data. Therefore, how do we find the standard deviation of this data? But we are also forgetting one point. Can you guess what that point is? Yes. Before we know which formula to use, we need to clarify whether this data is that of a sample or a population because we know these formulas are slightly different. This will help us to be sure of the correct formula to apply. Because as mentioned earlier, the formula for sample standard deviation is slightly different from that of the population. So we understand that this data is for a sample as it was mentioned in the question that it's a sample of children in Samaru Zaria. So this is not a population, but a sample. So we'll be using the formula for calculating the standard deviation for ungrouped data of a sample, which is this formula. Now there are six steps according to this formula. The first is to calculate the mean of the sample. This is denoted as x bar. Then we subtract the mean from each number or value in the data set to get the deviations of each value from the mean. Next we square each of the deviations to get the squared deviations from the mean. Then we sum the squared deviations together to get the sum of the squared deviations. We divide the sum by the number of individuals in the sample minus one. And finally we find the square root. And this will give us the standard deviation, which is denoted as capital letter S. Easy peasy. Now, it is always better to use a table when computing statistics by hand to make it tidy and easy to calculate. So for this, our data of the number of visits, let us draw a simple table with two columns. In the first column, let us start by labeling the column with our variable, which is the number of visits. Now let us enter our data values into each row. In this table, the data of each child will be represented on one row. So the first child had two visits, the second had three visits, then seven, five, and then eight visits. Nice. In statistics, the index variable is usually denoted as x sub i. You can call it whatever you want, but for us to follow our formula, let's stick with x sub i. Now to the first step, which is to calculate the mean of this sample. The mean is denoted as x bar. X bar is a symbol for mean of a sample. If we were dealing with a population, the symbol is denoted as mu. So the mean X bar for individual series data is given by the formula summation of all the values in the sample 
So that means the summation of all the values of visits, i.e. x sub i, now divided by the total number of children, which is the number of values in the sample or the sample size. And this is denoted by a lowercase n. This just simply means we add all the data values together and divide by the number of values. And we already know our x sub i in the table, right? We can see from this data that there were only five children because there are five values of five data points, right? So our number of data values or our sample size n is equal to five. Great. So x bar will be equal to two plus three plus seven plus five plus eight, all divided by five. That is 25 divided by five. That's a mean of five visits. All right. So now we have our x bar as five visits and our n as five. Let's go to step two, which is to subtract the mean from each value of x sub i. This will give us the distance between each value from the mean, i.e. the deviations from the mean. That's the part of the formula that is in parentheses. Let's add this to the second column. So the title will be x sub i minus x bar. For the first value, our value is 2, and the deviation of 2 from the mean will be 2 minus 5. That's negative 3. For the second value, it will be 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. For the third, we will have 7 minus 5. That will give 2. The fourth is 5 uh, minus 5, and that will be 0. And lastly, this will be 8 minus 5, which is 3. Now we have all the deviations from the mean. In step 3, we will find the square of the differences. That's the exponential 2 we see in the formula. So let's add another column to this table where we'll enter these values. Let's label this as x sub i minus x bar, all in parentheses squared as seen in the formula. So for the first, it will be negative 3 squared. That's negative 3 multiplied by negative 3. This will give us 9. Next is negative 2 squared. That's negative 2 times negative 2. That is 4. For the third, we have 2 multiplied by 2, and this is 4. Here, 0 multiplied by itself is 0, and finally, 3 squared is 9. So the squared deviations of all our values from the mean are 9, 4, 4, 0, and 9. Awesome. Now we go to step 4, where we'll find the sum of all the squared deviations. So let's do that under the table right here. Let's put the notation as is in the formula. Summation of the squared deviations from the first value to the last value. So we'll add 9 plus 4 plus 4 plus 0 plus 9, giving us a total of 26. Nice. Then we'll go to step 5, where we'll divide this sum by the sample size minus 1. And we already have this sample size as 5. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So we'll have 26 divided by 4, and that will give us 6.5. Now, our final step to complete the formula is to find the square root. So the square root of 6.5 will give a standard deviation of approximately 2.6 visits. Awesome. Now, remember, our mean number of visits was 5 visits, right? Now, looking at our data on the number of visits of children to the training center, what does a mean of 5 visits and a standard deviation of 2.6 visits imply concerning this data? Well, it's simple. This indicates that the number of visits of the children to the center varied on average by about 2.6 visits from the mean number of 5 visits. Easy peasy. Let me explain this a bit further using a number line to show the dispersion of the data. Remember, we said the standard deviation is a measure of spread, right? So let us see how this is playing out here in our data. The first child had 2 visits. I'll represent this with a red dot. The second had three visits, the third had seven, the fourth had five, and then the last was eight. Remember the dude with the bike, right? So a mean of five indicates that the midpoint or the central point or the central value of our data is five. We can see that the majority of the data values are clustering around five, right? And a standard deviation of 2.6 visits mean on average the data of the children varied by 2.6 visits above and below the mean. Awesome. In summary, we looked at how to compute the standard deviation of ungrouped data of a sample of five children. We explained the formula and we showed six easy steps that we can take to obtain the standard deviation. And finally, we interpreted the standard deviation in the context of our data. Awesome. Now, if you want to learn how to calculate the standard deviation for discrete series data, check out this video here. And for grouped data with continuous series, check out this other video right here.
And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more easy statistical stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.